If you are a React developer, you must have come across the term lift the state up. Well, if you haven't heard of it, this video will show you exactly what it is and the ideal scenario to utilize this pattern in your React project. Consider this simple example. It's a basic to-do application that consists of three components. The to-do count, to-do list, and add to-do. They are all being imported in the app component. As the name suggests, the to-do count just displays the total number of to-dos added. The to-do list displays the list of to-dos added by mapping through the list of to-dos from the to-do state array here. And the add to-do simply adds a to-do. Upon clicking the add to-do button, the handle submit function of this form is invoked, which extracts the to-do we typed in the form in Input using event.target.elements and just console logs it for now. And remember, you need to set the ID as to do here if you want to be able to access the input value using event.target.elements.todo. If these two are in the same, then it will throw an error. So now first of all, why should you care about lifting the state? Well, if you look at these components carefully, they need to share some state, some to-do state. You need to share that to-do state created in to-do list in order to display the number of to-dos as well as to update your to-do list. And this is where the concept of lifting state up comes. We lift up state to a common ancestor of components that need it so that they can all share in the state. This allows us to more easily share state among all of these components that rely upon it. So now you must ask the question, what common ancestor should you lift up your state to so all of the components can read from and update that state? Well in our case, it's of course gonna be the app component. Because the app component is the only component common to all three components in this case. And we can pass the to-do state from there. So I'll remove this to-do state I had created in to-do's list and move it to the app component instead. This will throw an error in to-do's list for now since there's no to-do state to map from. But don't worry, I'll fix this soon. And now in the app component, since the respective components require the to-do state, I'll pass the to-do state as a prop to to-do's count and to-do's list. And I'll pass set to-do's as a prop to add to-do's which will update the current to-do's. So now in the to-do's count, I'll destructure the to-do's prop and here within curly braces, I'll display the to-do's dot length which denotes the total number of to-do's added. And then in the to-do's list component, I'll destructure the to-do's prop here as well. And we're already mapping through to-do's down here. As you can see, the error is gone now since the to-do state now exists in this component. And then in the add to-do's component, I'll first destructure the set to-do's callback. And then in the handle submit, I'll set the to-do's by utilizing the previous values provided in the function version of set state and then simply return a new array that contains all the existing previous values along with the new to-do we are trying to add. So this line should update the to-do state with a new array consisting of all the to-do's. And now if I try to add something after typing on the input, you can see the to-do gets added and everything works perfectly fine. So basically lifting state up is an important pattern for React because sometimes we have state that's located within a particular component that also needs to be shared with sibling components. And so instead of using an entire state management library like Redux or React Context, we can just lift the state up to the closest common ancestor and pass the state values and callbacks to update that state. So that's all for the video, if you found it insightful, don't forget to like and subscribe.